I'd like to thank Dominion and the Library of Virginia for this wonderful program and for honoring my father with this award. I'm honored to accept this award on his behalf. I'm also honored that the topic of the essay was my dad's philanthropy. Before I continue, I think I should give the, I think we should give the essay contest winners another round of applause. Before the program started, I gave each one of the essay winners a copy of my dad's book, The Poor Man's Philanthropist, The Thomas Cannon Story. Also, I need to recognize some of my family members. Uh, I can't see out there, so I don't know where they are. <laughs> but I know they're out there somewhere. I'd like, <laughs> uh, I'd like to recognize my brother Calvin and his wife who came in from Alabama to be here. Uh, and, 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 and two, and two of their kids, are Marlon and Akima, they came from Virginia Beach to be up here. And of course, last but not least, I have to recognize my wife, Jennifer. Jennifer held a special place. <laughs> Jennifer held a special place in my parents' hearts, and I think she spent more time with them than I did. So. <laughs> So they, so they loved her, and in fact, in my dad's book, when he did his dedication, she got recognized before I did. <laughs> uh, his dedication to Jennifer was, to Jennifer being the lovingest, most supportive daughter-in-law a man could ever have. And just below that, he said to TC for marrying Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my dad never really intended to be a philanthropist. His first gift of $1,000 was a one-time gift to show appreciation to the West Hampton Junior Women's Club who were volunteering their time and money to work with kids at an elementary school in Church Hill. But after he did that, he said, that wasn't too painless. I could probably do that again. So he made another gift, and then eventually it kept on going. Usually being inspired by an article in the newspaper about someone's unselfish acts of kindness or sacrifice. He continued to do this for years, but eventually he became disturbed about people's inhumanity towards each other and questioned why he was doing this. He felt like people weren't worthy of his efforts and his sacrifice. But he said a thought crossed his mind to go upstairs and look in this box of Bible verses. And he went upstairs and got this box. And this box was shaped like a cross, and it had Bible verses rolled up in it. And he reached in this box and pulled out one of the verses and unraveled it to see what it said. And this verse said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. And that was from John 15th chapter, 16th verse. And of course that shocked him because, you know, there are thousands of Bible verses in the Bible. <laughs> and uh, for him to pick one that answered his question why he was doing this, he said, wow. So he was so amazed by that, he took the Bible verse and put it in a little small frame and stuck it on the wall just to remind him why he was doing this. So he continued the philanthropy for years and years. And eventually, he ended up with that same mindset. You know, why am I doing this? Because it was, you know, great sacrifice for him to do these things. And most of his philanthropy was done after he had retired. So his salary was around about 12000 a year. And he continued to do that under that type of salary. He said that there was no big booming voice or anything telling him to 
go to this box, but he said just crossed his mind that maybe I should go back to the box again. He went back up to that same box and reached in there and put, 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 uh, pulled out another Bible verse. Now mind you, he had taken the other one and stuck it on the wall in the frame. And he unraveled the snake's Bible verse and he opened it up and it says, you did not choose me. <laughs> and, and the same verse and he was, and that, that really, <laughs> That, that really shook him up then because there wasn't supposed to have been an identical Bible verse in there. All of them supposed to be different. And, uh, and, and he said, okay, I get it. <laughs> so, of course, he never questioned the philanthropy again after that, why he was doing this. And amazingly, he saw that same Bible verse in, in, during his lifetime in other strange occasions. He told me that one time he was working the mail and this bundle of mail fell open, and this magazine fell out there on the floor at his feet, and it was a, a religious magazine, and it just so happened to be addressed to him. He picked it up and looked at it, and there was a page folded in there. So he opened it up, <laughs> looked at that page, and it said, you did not choose me. <laughs> <laughs> Another, another reminder that, you know, this is why you're doing this. And the last time that happened, he said he was walking down the street and he walked past the pawn shop and he looked in the window and he saw a wallet in there and he decided it had a cross on there. So he decided to buy this wallet. He went inside, got the wallet out the window and opened it up you did not choose me. <laughs> so, so that was it. <laughs> that was it. So, you know, he knew that it, this, was, this philanthropy was greater than he was. And he was being inspired to do this. So he never questioned it after that. And even though the figure that people hear is the 150 some thousand dollars, a lot of people don't know that about two weeks before he passed away, he gave away another 27,000. So he actually gave away more than 170,000 uh, doing this philanthropy. And of course, when people would ask him, what should they do to remember you? And he just simply said, help somebody. And the last thing people asked him, said, well, what should people say about Thomas Cannon? And my dad said, having been born and reared under less than the most favorable of circumstances, Thomas Cannon tried as best as he could as often as he could, to do as much as he could, for as many as he could, for as long as he could, with the little he had. Thank you very much.